Now, when you process the payroll, let's just go through the flowchart and think about what kind of reports would be necessary when we process the payroll. So it would look something like this. We have to first set up the payroll and then we got to track the time if we have hourly workers. We don't necessarily need to track the time within QuickBooks, but we're going to have to track the time somewhere to put it in the system when we pay people and process the checks. And then we're going to process the checks, which would be the pain of the employees. These are going to be the payroll checks. It might be electronic transfers that you're going to be setting up. And this would happen periodically, depending on how you set up the payroll, meaning you decide to pay them weekly, you decide to pay them bi-weekly, semi-monthly or monthly. And this would be the major kind of component of the payroll because it results in the actual payroll transactions, the lowering of the checking account, and it also is going to deal with all those kind of withholdings that we have to take into consideration. The federal withholdings being federal income tax, Social Security, Medicare. And then we also have our side of Social Security and Medicare on the employer side. And then we have federal unemployment tax on our side, the employer side. And then the state taxes may be applicable depending on the state that you're in as well. So that becomes a quite complex transaction, even if you have uh, only like a few employees. Now, when you record that transaction and process the check, you can't still just give them the check or give them the money in their account. You also have to provide them with a pay stub in some way, shape or form. You have to inform them, this is your gross pay and this is what we took from you. And that's why your net pay is not equal to your gross pay. Here's what you got. Here's what we took out. You have to do that on a uh, employee by employee basis, as well as on a year to date basis and paycheck by paycheck basis. So you can start to see that as you compile that information, that's kind of a lot of, of data that you're going to need to be able to properly report that. And you want to be able to support that data with reports within the QuickBooks system, which will look kind of like you can format them like a paycheck stub, right? It's going to have all the employees and then all of the withholdings, the gross pay, the withholdings, the net pay, and so on. Then after you pay them, the money that you took from them out of their out of their wages in order to pay their taxes as well as any benefits, you're gonna have to actually pay to the government. And that's when you process the, the liabilities forms here. So we could also have reports that would be tied out to the liabilities that we owe. Then on top of that, we've got the, the reporting that we need to do to the government. So on the federal side, we've got the quarterly reporting, the form 940. We've got then the year in, I'm sorry, the quarterlies are the 941s. And then at year end, we've got the 940, the W2s and uh, the W3s. So we need reports that will help us to populate the form 940, 941s, W2s and W3s. Now, note that if you do this internally, that means you're going to need a lot of reports. You're going to need the reports to support your paycheck stubs, providing the information to each employee on a year to date basis, as well as on a paycheck by paycheck basis. And you're going to need the reports that can verify and support the data that you're going to use to populate your quarterly 941s, your yearly 940 and your W2s and W3s. Now, if so, that means that you're going to have a lot of data if you're processing payroll within QuickBooks. So I'm going to 